Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today I'm gonna to go through the key terms for 2.4 encoding memories. I've already done the video on the CED question and the essential knowledge that they want you to know. So you can check that out if you haven't done that yet. And now we're just gonna go into the key terms with a definition and a real life example. There are not too many for this uh, section of the unit, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay, let's start. So basically these key terms are based on this CED question. Explain how different encoding processes work to get information into memory. So we're gonna look at the key terms associated with that. So here's the list of the ones we're going to do. Let's start off with mnemonic devices. And mnemonic devices are memory aids or strategies that help individuals remember information by associating it with easy to recall cues, such as acronyms, rhymes, or visual images. So for example, a common mnemonic device is the acronym HOMES to remember the Great Lakes in Canada, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. I guess it's not just Canada because they do border the U.S., but I am Canadian, so that's probably why I think of that. By using the word homes, the names of the lakes are easier to recall. I mean, we have all kinds of them. I remember when I was teaching in elementary school, we used to learn the colors of the rainbow, the Roy G. Biff, you know, and that was easy to remember the colors. So those are mnemonic devices, anything that makes it easy for us to remember information. Okay, we're going to talk about method of Loki. Method, method of Loki is a mnemonic technique that involves visualizing a familiar place, such as your home, and associating specific items or pieces of information you want to remember with a specific location in that place. This method leverages spatial memory to help you recall the information later. So for example, to remember a grocery list, you might visualize walking through your house and mentally placing each item you need in a different room. For instance, you can imagine placing apples on the kitchen table, milk in the living room, bread on your bed. When you later think of your house, these visualizations will help you recall each item on your list. Strange, but it works. <laughs> Chunking. Chunking is a memory strategy that involves breaking down large pieces of information into smaller, more manageable units or chunks to make them easier to remember. So for example, when trying to remember a long sequence of numbers, such as a phone number, you might chunk it into smaller groups. So for example, if your number is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, you would group it into one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. This makes the sequence easier to recall by reducing the cognitive load on your memory. Hierarchical organization. Hierarchical organization is a method of structuring information by arranging it into levels with general categories at the top and more specific subcategories categories beneath them. This approach helps to organize and simplify complex information, making it easier to understand and remember. So for example, when studying biology, you might use a hierarchical structure to remember the classifications of living organisms, starting with broad categories like kingdom, phylum, and class, then breaking these down into even more specific categories like order, family, genus, species. These organization tools help, this, this way of organizing helps you understand how different organisms are related to each other. We see this in textbooks as well, right? Where they break all the information down. The spacing effect. The spacing effect is a learning phenomenon where information is better retained when study sessions are spaced out over time rather than crammed into a short period. This technique enhances long-term memory by allowing time for consolidation between learning sessions. So basically, if you're studying for an exam, instead of reviewing all the material the night before, programming, you study a little bit each day over a week. This spaced retention helps you remember the material more effectively and for a longer period compared to cramming. Serial position effect. The serial position effect is a cognitive phenomenon where people tend to remember the first and last items in a list better than those in the middle. So when trying to memorize a list of grocery items, you're more likely to remember the first items for a like milk, and then the last items, eggs, better than the items in the middle of the bread, uh, in the middle of the list, like cheese or bread. Oops. Okay, so let's go through like we always do. We're gonna just gonna flash the words on the screen, pause, try to remember the definition and an example of that particular word so that later you can apply it on the exam. Mnemonic devices. Method of Loki, chunking, hierarchical organization, hierarchical, <laughs> hierarchical organization, the spacing effect, serial position effect, 
And that's all I have for key terms for 2.4 encoding memories. Hopefully you found that helpful. Remember, it really is important to keep practicing these words. You've got to keep like reviewing them and remembering them. And so that when on you come onto the exam day, they're really encoded in your brain. You can really retrieve them easily. And that's really important for the AP exam because you need to be able to not only define them, but you need to be able to apply them. So in your MCQs and your FRQs. So super important to be keep practicing. Okay. Hopefully you found this video is helpful. Please leave me a comment if you do. I really like to see the comments and I always answer. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Really would love to get to 10,000. My kids say it's impossible, but let's prove them wrong. Anyway, have have a great day and see you next time.